What is up guys? Today we're going to be making a neon logo in After Effects and it's a really cool effect. It's kind of using the best of some of my other products into a condensed version in this one that's really fast to edit, to render, and I think you're going to love the results. So there's two versions of this. There's the free version and paid version. The free version has limited functionality, but you can still do most of everything in this tutorial. So let's dig into the steps. So before we begin, let's make sure that we all have the same screen. So I have my project panel up and then I have effect controls and the composition panel and the timeline. And if you're not seeing those, go to window and then composition, effect controls, project and timeline. So now that we all have the same screen, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into the neon logo folder and then we're going to go to edit twirl that down and then we have steps one through four so we're going to be inserting our logo outlining the logo or basically turning it into a neon with outlines that look like wires and then we're going to be inserting our text if you want some and then finally adding details if you want to jump to a specific section just in the description below click on the chapter and that'll bring you to that in case you're stuck on a particular section you have to watch this whole thing so double click into insert logo and then we have our logo that this is just a placeholder one but what you're going to do is hit command i control i and import your logo now you can use pngs you can use svgs uh, whatever after effects will allow you to import jpegs a lot of times you're going to have uh if with a jpeg a white background with it and ideally you could just bring it in here and it's already has an alpha channel like a pmg file but if it doesn't that's okay we can just manually um, outline it in the next step so now that we have our logo inserted, let's go to outline it. All right, so let's double click on step two outline. And then within here, we actually have two different methods for you to convert your logo into a neon. So there's kind of a, a fast, easy way if depending on your logo, it's, it's more of a, a blocky, easy to work with logo. And then a manual way where you individually go in and um, add the neon around each individual color. So the first way with the fast outline, uh, you can just go into the effect controls panel and then increase or decrease the threshold. It's zero to 255 for the settings. And that might work for you depending again on your logo. Uh, in this instance, it does work, but I know this is kind of a cheap logo to do it on because it's really blocky and there's not that many colors. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna disable this for now and we're gonna go and I have this other logo. I'm gonna change the size to 12. So this one is a little bit more complicated and better for this example, because let's say that I want to have the white from the outline. Well, if I go to step two, you can see that um, it's actually giving me like white and blue edges and we don't want both. So I'm just gonna increase, like if I were to do this one, I'd probably bring it to this and call it a day, but let's dig into the manual method. So what we're gonna do is click on fast outline and then the eye icon to disable it and then go to color one enable it, and then double click on color one, and then select the controller. Now within here, we have this crosshair and it has a circle, and we're gonna grab the circle and move that to the color that we wanna isolate. So let's start at the top, right? We're just gonna bring it there and you're not seeing anything, and that's because we have to adjust the threshold. So I'm just gonna try bringing it up or down depending on the color value until we have something that we want. Now this is kind of a tricky one because this color and this color are really similar. So sometimes it has a harder time and that's where the threshold comes in, it's really handy. A couple more settings you should be aware of in here. Extract color range. So let's say, for example, that this color up here and this color were the same. Um, if you have extract color range on, it will try to isolate both of those sections. Whereas if you disable it, it will only isolate the one section that the crosshairs are touching. And then extract white. So it seems a little odd, but by default, it doesn't treat white as like a color to isolate. So we have to manually tell After Effects, this is a white color, I want that to be isolated. So if you're running into problems with like a white part of your logo, you just wanna double check on that setting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into step two outline, and then I'm gonna go to color two, and I'm going to enable that. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to go to the controller and I'm going to decrease that value. It's kind of a fine tuning process of patience too. All right, so it's really close to that right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna fast forward this and do all the different colors on it and uh, so we can keep moving along. 
All right, so now that we have all the different colors outlined, one last thing I wanna mention before we go to the next step is that let's say that you want to add a custom part to your neon that's not actually in the logo itself. This happens pretty frequently for me when I'm making custom neons for people, is that like you have to have a little bit of creative leeway with this because a lot of times something just doesn't translate as well as you'd like on a neon. So for example, let's say that I wanted there to be a line on the bottom here, but there isn't actually one in the neon. And maybe I wanted it to be like this orange color. So what you can do is you can make sure that no layers are highlighted in the timeline. So I'm gonna click down here and then click on your pen tool and then disable the fill, Oop. disable the fill by clicking fill and then this icon right here and then change your stroke to that color. And then that stroke looks like around five maybe. And then I'm just gonna make a line from here over to here. Five's a little bit too thick, maybe four. And then I'm just gonna go in and hit UU and under the stroke settings, I'm gonna twirl that down. I'm going to have it so that it's a round cap so you can see like before, after, it kind of makes a hard end on it if you don't have that enabled. And now we have like a, a custom section that isn't on our logo, but it will work just like if it were part of one. All right, let's dig into insert text. So we're gonna double click step three, insert text. And this will be a fast one because all you're doing is inserting your text. Now it's important to note that the color of your text, just like with your neon, is translated in the final result. So if you have red text, it's gonna be a red neon. I have it white by default in here, but you can change it whatever you want. So let's bring up the character panel. So under window and then character right here, uh, I'm using this font called text one. I think it works actually really well. It's free, I'm pretty sure it's a Google font and uh, it looks very neon-ish, which you know is always good with neons but you can change this to whatever font you want. Um, it is nice sometimes to use this faux bold setting if you want to make your neon a little bit thicker uh, because the goal is you want to try to match the thickness of your text to the thickness of your neon wires. All right, so step four, add details. We're gonna double click into there and we have two different options in here. We have the wires and the mount controller. So the wires allow you to very quickly add wires. It's a custom font that you wanna make sure you have installed from the download. And you can just type any characters and it will add neon wires for you. Hit command A and you can adjust the font size just like if it were a font because it is a font and you can adjust the size that way and that will adjust the thickness as well. So just think of it like a font, right? If you want it to be bigger, you have to make the size bigger, but the, the values, the weight will be larger too on it. So I'm just gonna undo that. And we have the mount control. So this you can adjust, I'm just gonna isolate this for a second so you don't get distracted by anything else. So we have the mount position, so you can move this up or down, left or right, the color, the size of the bars, if you want them to be wider or narrower. Um, we have the bar count, so let's say you want more than three, if you want four in there. We have vertical bars as well. So maybe you want um, vertical bars and horizontal bars, and then the same applies for them, the, the width and the height as well. All right, so we have step four done. Let's look at the results. So we're gonna go to two render and double click on this main composition. And we're gonna let After Effects do its thing. It usually takes one to two seconds to see the results. Um, and there you have it. So it's pretty cool. You'll notice that there's another new addition and that's all these little ties that are around the neon. We have three different controllers for you to work with, right? We have the neon controller, the scene controller, and the camera controller. Um, I'm just gonna go through each one really quickly because it's simple to work with, but still worth mentioning all the little things I added in here for you. Neon controller. So you can adjust the neon brightness, how far the brightness is, how much the neon illuminates the scene, the bulb variance, kind of like uh, some parts of the neon are light, some are dark, and the line thickness. You can adjust all of the thickness of the entire neon from right here, which is really convenient. Next, we have the scale. This was a feature from Neon Sign Kit that people had asked for that didn't work, that now does work. Uh, we have the saturation, we have the lightness and texture of the neon, so kind of basic settings. Next, we have the animation. So by default, um, you don't have to go in and add keyframes. So let's go through these individually. Start time seconds and frames. So when should the neon start? When should it go from off to on? 
So it's set by default at zero seconds and five frames. So if I bring the current time indicator to frame zero and I let it render, you'll see that A, it's closer up and B, it's off. So it will not turn on until five frames in. End time, two seconds. So what this means is that it will start to, it will be 100% off at that time. So there's a flicker on and a flicker off animation. That's just a couple frames long. That adds a little bit more polish, but just know that whatever time you set for end time, that's when it will be completely off. And then the text delay. So the text that's below here, animates on, you can have it animate on at the exact same time, but by default, it animates on just a little bit later to add a little bit more visual interest. So we have that set to 20 frames. Next we have, uh, should the neon be off at start and should it be on? So basically, I guess if you wanted to make like a loop or something, um, you could have it be on or off at the beginning and end. And then the last one is enable bright flash. So when the neon turns on, it's actually really bright. It's kind of by default and it has a kind of a camera move that happens back. Uh, so if you want that disabled, you can go in here and disable that. Okay, next let's dig into the scene controller. So within here we have the background, and just by changing this menu to a different background, you can completely change the scene, and it's really slick. Uh, I have a bunch of probably the most popular scenes I think people would want for a background in here. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next one, which is darkness. So you can increase or decrease the darkness of your neon just by changing the slider. So if you want the scene to be maybe a little bit lighter than that, uh, it's as simple as that. Next we have master elements darker. So sometimes if you have the, the mount or the wires, um, they might look like they're not matching the scene very well. They might be too light or too dark. So we can go in here and we can adjust the curves and that will adjust all of the details around the neon to kind of help match the scene. And then we have shadow opacity. So there's actually a shadow that's being cast. So we can increase or decrease the shadow opacity there. Next we have shadow overlays. So if I disable it, you can kind of uh, more clearly see it. So this is before and this is after with them on. So it's kind of like this window shadow overlay that's happening on the scene. And you can uh, adjust the opacity of that and how dark that is. There's the ties that we talked about that uh, you can quickly enable or disable right here. I'll disable it so you can kind of see a before and after. So it's not only the ties, but it's also like these little clips behind the tie that the, the tie is holding on to. And then another really cool feature is I set it up on a random seed. So let's say that you don't quite love how it's hitting on certain text elements or part of your logo. You can just change this to any value and it will update and have all the ties in a different spot. Next we have the background gradient. So if you selected gradient from here, then you can just quickly go in and change the, the gradient in the background. And then this last one we have is grain opacity. Now this one you'll take a render hit on, but the results are so nice on it. It's gonna put up to like 10% so you can kind of see uh, little before and after. So it just adds more grain to the scene and it kind of completes that neon look of having grain in the scene. Cause normally like when a camera is recording, I'm gonna bump it way up so you can see it. Like wouldn't recommend this setting, but you get the idea. Okay, so last thing we have is the camera controller. All right, so let's click on our camera controller and under camera moves, I have two moves set up for you. So there's the, the standard move. And then if we go to the other camera move, it's just a standard static camera that's straight on with the logo that does not move. So this will be handy. I'm going to explain how to do uh, uh, export using a transparent file in just a second. But this would be handy if you don't want the camera to move at all. You just want it to stay in the same spot. So I'll put this back on camera two. Next we have the depth of field. So again, this will take a render hit, but it does look really nice. So I'll turn that off for a second. So you can kind of see like on here, it's kind of not blurry anymore with it back on. It just adds a little bit more um, kind of creaminess to the scene and makes it look more polished. The aperture you can adjust. Um, on some of the camera moves, I do have the aperture that's being manually adjusted, uh, some that aren't. So if you want to adjust that, you can. These ones you probably don't have to worry about. I just added them just in case, but basically what they do is they allow you to have a little bit of subtle camera movement 
on your logo if you want just to increase the frequency to like one don't go too crazy with it and then you can manually adjust all the different little subtle movements that it has with like the direction rotation zoom etc okay so that's everything for the camera controller so how you're going to export this out as a transparent file that you can put over your footage is you're going to go to background and you're going to change it to transparent and then you're going to go to enable shadow overlays and disable that because we don't want shadow overlays and then we're going to disable or just put it to zero a grain opacity and then finally we're going to go to the camera controller and make sure that it's on the camera move one so it's straight on with the camera and it doesn't move okay so now that we have our camera all set up we're going to go back to the project panel and then we're going to with main highlighted go to file export and add to render queue now there's a couple settings uh, you could use and you have to make sure that whatever codec you're using it allows transparency so like for example an h264 does not allow transparency so what i would recommend is if you have it go to quicktime and then go to format options and then go to apple prores 444 and click ok and then make sure under the channel output that rgb plus alpha is there so that's one way you could do it if you don't have quicktime you could use a png sequence uh, just make sure again that rgb plus alpha is selected and make sure that you're uh, like putting these in a folder on your computer and not just on your desktop because it will fill up your desktop with images okay so let's dig into how to increase the the time how long your animation is all right so what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, let's just say right now that we want to double the duration so we're going to go to the neon controller and we're going to go to end time and right now it ends at two so let's say it ends at four okay next what we're going to do is currently it ends at 209 so let's bring it to 409 with the work area so somewhere right about there and that's it that's all you really have to do, and it will basically just work. All right, you guys, that's everything. If there's anything I can help you with, please feel free to reach out at support at thomascorvar.com. Feel free to check out more stuff on my YouTube channel, Thomas Kovar. If there's anything I can do for you, just hit me up. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a good day.